call the meeting to order at one minute after five, according to our faithful clock. And we have a whole bunch of guests, so why don't we introduce ourselves and then ask them to introduce themselves. Starting with you, Liz. Liz Scharf, Middlesex Select Board. Peter Hood, Middlesex Select Board. Dorinda Kroll, Town Treasurer. Steve Martin, Middlesex Select Board. Phil Hay, Select Board. Mary Skinner, Select Board. Gianna Petito, Wadiuski Conservation District. Lee Rossberg, Conservation Commission. George Longenecker, Middlesex Conservation Commission. Bill McManus, President. Pat McManus, Taxpayer. <laughs> Sarah. Oh, Sarah Merriman, Select Board Assistant and Town Clerk. Okay, thank you all. Um, and do we have any amendments to no. the agenda? None. Okay, so with that, we have the Winooski Natural Resources Con Conservation District for the presentation. Well, yes. great, thank you. Thanks for um, putting time on your agenda for me to present. Um, just. I wanted to get one sense. Have you folks worked with conservation districts before? Do you know who we are and what we do? It doesn't hurt to remind yeah. us briefly. Yes. Sure. So there's 14 conservation districts across the state. The Winooski one covers all of Chittenden County, Washington County, and three towns in Orange. Uh, we were formed after the Dust Bowl, 1940 time. Mm -hmm. And yep, before Clean Water Act, the existing EPA, all that jazz. Um, we have a broad charged to manage the or promote the wise use of natural resources in the district. Um, we do a range of work. Some of it's working with farmers, managing their fertilizer runoff. Some of it's working with landowners to put you know, trees next to their streams, working with towns to put rain gardens in, things like that. So um, I'm new to this position. I started in October. And I'm here to chat with you about some projects that started in Middlesex by my predecessor. And they were working with Conservation Commission, and they had some history on it. Um, and wanted to sort of give you some progress updates on it and address any questions you folks might have. So there's two projects going on. The first one I wanted to chat with you about is um, something we're calling Shady Rill Road, 30% design which we've contracted with Storm Environmental to help us with. So Shady Rill Road alongside Martins Brook has some stormwater issues. Most of the issues right now are kind of coming off of the Rumney School property um, and kind of channeling down this incised channel into Martins Brook and kind of bringing along with it a lot of sediment, a lot of phosphorus. Um, and so my predecessor secured some funding to do a preliminary design, 30% design to figure out what is sort of causing that and what are some possible solutions that can, we can then get funding for to implement in that area. So we've started the project uh, just recently and we had a sort of stakeholder launch meeting where we brought in the Conservation Commission, Lee was there. We met with the school because it's on their property, um, the school district. Uh, Washington supervisory. supervisory unit was there, um, the basin planner for the area, Stone Environmental. So we sort of reviewed, okay, what, what, what are the issues, what are we looking at, um, and how are we going to move forward? Stone's on their merry way right now, sort of looking, it's hard to sort of assess a lot with snow on the ground, but they're using some LIDAR and things to learn a bit more about the area. We'll have a middle of the term stakeholder meeting to figure out what they've learned and then move identify some solutions to get to a 30 percent design has this um changed since they did that uh with with, with the the new building remember they put in that little the water rain, the yeah rain the rain garden, garden or something like that is this it, a result of that or is this it's something not a result of that if anything that should help mitigate the problem but one change that has been made in the last few years was the installation of a culvert up near the sharp corner across from the bandstand and that's taken a lot of the water that would have run into the rain garden put it across the road and um, 
is incising a channel or eroding a channel across the field near the uh, septic mound of the school and then running off over the bank. And there's a, a gully that's formed that's been there for a few, several years. Um, but last spring, the runoff was uh, really, really doubled that gully in size. And one of the fears is it's threatening the actual infrastructure of the, of the septic mound. Wow. And there's so drainage did we, pipe. Did we know that was going to happen? So refresh my, mm -hmm. ref I'm sorry, Mary. Go ahead. Yeah. I, I mean, when they put the gully, when they put the culvert in, did we know that was going to be a potential problem? Um, I'm not sure if, if it was considered in that culvert design. Do you know My, my memory is that it was strongly recommended that we put that culvert in and by divert who? that water over there. By whom? I'm not sure whether it was the Conservation Commission or who it was, or some water resources person. <laughs> but there was way too much water running down along the road, right. down to where the rain garden was. Right. And that was put in to divert some of that water. Now, I don't remember the details of that. Does anybody here remember the details of that? No. It wasn't that long ago. It wasn't that long ago. It no. was when we were paving the road, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, right. We put that cover in. Yeah. Three years. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, okay. So, I did share with you at least a map of the area. So, if you wanted to get a sense of what we're talking about, this is the school here. North of it is sort of this is where their septic is on this mm -hmm. field. Um, the water is rushing. It actually downhill is north. So it's rushing downhill. The culvert, I think, is this area, right? It's right at the corner. Yeah. Right at the corner here. Yeah. So that you can sort of start to see there's a bit of a process or a channel going here. And then the mm. erosion of the gully is sort of right here. Um, so stone right now is sort of looking not just what can they do here at the gully, but they are kind of looking a little bit at the, the town um, uh, garage. garage, thank you. The town garage area, what might, what are some possible solutions that could be there? What are some possible solutions that might happen along the road? Um, one thing that I know that Amy McCrellis is the individual at Stone who's the project lead on this, and she'd love to chat maybe with you, Steve, at some point, um, because I think there might be some road erosion inventory work happening along Story mm -hmm. Road. Um, they don't know the solutions yet. It's pretty preliminary, but one of the things they might consider is diverting some of the water down that way, down that road, yep. because it's a less steep way down to the creek here than then right it is here. Down over that it other gets bank. super steep yep. here. Wait, so where's the creek? We don't see the creek on ours. I don't we don't think. see the creek. Um, mm. The creek is the very yeah, but look at ours. Oh, I guess it wasn't. Mm. Just like this. Print. Yeah. So it. Yeah, so it kind of crosses from oh, left to right across right your here. sheet. It, yeah, Let's parallel see. sheet. And okay. um, I'm sorry if it cut, chopped off of your map. And and you can see a little bit right up there. So the problem is that it's going down into here and there's runoff from all this area. Is that right? There's runoff. The erosion of that thing can also potentially cause the stability of that entire side Where's our of the septic hill? on this map? Septic is right here. That's what I thought. Yeah. And there is personal property here, private property here and here and a couple. This is the house in the barn? Um, That's the Pendergast house. Brian Pendergast. Who used to own it before? Peter, who used to own it before? You know the Pendergast property. I can't think of it. Okay. <laughs> it used to be the Stories Place, the old days. It was the Stories Place, right? There? Yeah, no. no. I don't think. So. Oh, this is the this is the schoolhouse. Right. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. So the schoolhouse was Phoebe Morris. Yeah, that's right, Phoebe. So that's sort of the scope of the work right now. At the first stakeholder meeting, we did identify these private owners, which I'll be doing some outreach to to let them know and invite them to the midterm meeting to see what feedback they have on the designs. Um, Amy will be reaching out to you, I think, to chat about the story piece yeah. of it. Um, but really, we're just here, and we have some background to address if there's other questions that you folks have as we move forward on the project. Could it, why do you have this section here, the drainage area, one impervious and all that? 
So all of this, my understanding is that all of this feeds into that gully. My right. The, dra the, the drainage area is, is basically the basin where any surface water would run off into the gully. And then the hatched area is um, impervious surface. Roads, so the gravel, roads, buildings, drive. parking lots mm -hmm. that won't allow for uh, infiltration. Buildings, rooftops, and all the stuff that sheds so, water. So Stone will really look at those areas and see if there's some some way of managing the runoff from the impervious surfaces near near those areas, settlement basins, and that type of thing. So it's really when you're done with what you're doing here, it just gives us guidance. Really, there's it's not actual work that will be done. It's just telling us what. Work there's no be implementation done. work exactly. So this is going to get to something called the 30% design, and that usually lines us up for a couple different funding options. Um, one of which is the ecosystem restoration program, um, or a block grant that districts have access to, and so then we can apply for either just final design or final design and implementation from there. Um, but we're, we're a little bit of a ways out from that. Yep. Okay. What's a little ways? Well, this is this year. So we wouldn't be doing 100% design or implementation until at the earliest next year. Um, and implementation would happen over the summer. So 2020 summer is very, very early. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of depends on if we get funding for it what are the results of this? Are there good solutions that make sense? Um, depending on the funding, it changes every round with the ERP funding. Match is required or not required. And so if they say, if you're gonna implement something and you need a 20% match from the town, then that becomes a conversation with the town about what they can offer as match. And that actually feeds into what I wanted to chat with you folks about for the other project. But I won't jump there yet. So incline would be Allowed for a match? Depends on the funding source, but most usually yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. How did you guys get involved in this? Did, did you lead? Did you guys contact them? Um, we were contacted by the district by um, Gianna's predecessor as to, f she asked for a letter of support for the 30% design part of the project. And we discussed it. And at that time, I had brought it to the select board, and um, I think you also provided a letter of support for the design. Um, yeah. But I mean, you you came to us, not not right. Middlesex going to the district. Right. The district contacted Middlesex. Okay. Thanks. Which I think goes sometimes both ways. We try to build relationships yeah. with conservation commissions to say, if you have a project, let us know. But we also spend time scoping out things that have been identified in um, river corridor plans or the basin plan for the Winooski. And if they've said, for example, Martin Brook is impaired for sediment, we might scope that out and see what, what are some possible projects that could happen along there. So I don't, I don't exactly know how Karina ended up with this project, but there's different ways she could have identified it. Any other questions on this one? Okay. So um, to move on to the other one, this we're calling, confusingly enough, Shady Real Picnic Site. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you might have some background on this. So a 30% design was just completed for the Shady Real Picnic Site. And so this is along Shady Real Road. Something if you're looking for what it might look like. I shared with you the final report. Oh, you know what? I didn't print that out if you want me to. It is many it's, pages. It's many pages. So you can look at it um, later. You don't necessarily need to have access to it. So um, my predecessor was con contacted with Watersheds Consulting Associates and said, how can we look at this picnic area where there's a lot of erosion, a lot of access going into the creek and sort of address the water quality issue. Um, they came up with some possible solutions and I think met with the Conservation Commission and picked yeah, the, one to move to 30%. They met with me and Karina and we chose kind of the middle ground. There were three designs. One was very basic, one was the middle ground, and one was, if you want, it was the Cadillac plan. <laughs> <laughs> we, we went with the, the Honda Civic. And, uh, <laughs> 
which basically addressed the major issues, which was the erosion on the bank um, and floodplain restoration and also removal of a sediment plug. Um, there's different channels that water could take during a high water stage. Um, and one of those main channels as you, as you go kind of south of the main picnic area is, is blocked up with sediment, maybe from the gully up, <laughs> up the stream. Yeah. Um, so water is not a, doesn't take that course and it uh, focuses the energy and causes more erosion, higher flows in, in the one channel that's not blocked. Um, so we, we saw that as a, a, a good way to dissipate the energy during flood events so that um, we're not increasing the sedimentation of Wrightsville Reservoir. Thanks. So the kind of scope of the work, yeah, sure. Sorry, it's double, it's a pretty small font. Um, so the scope of the work in this option two that was pushed to a 30% design was the removal of the sediment plug um, and creating four hardened access points into Martins Brook because we recognize that that is a recreational site. It's, I mean, people like to go there. So this would be sort of like stone steps and paths to sort of direct people. Let's take these down into the brook. It won't erode the bank and, and one, everywhere. Oh. One would be ADA compliant too. Wow. wow. ADA compliant. Hardscape, huh? That's a good yeah. idea. Um, and, and then buffering the rest of it with plantings um, to put in enough buffer of plantings to really stabilize the brook, we actually need to move the road over, the access road over a little bit. So, so this... I have a question about that. Sure. Uh, and I understand the issue where the, where the road, because it's raised up, is blocking the capability of water to flow across. Mm -hmm. I mean, wouldn't it be more cost effective to do that with culverts rather than move the whole road? So the movement of the road is to allow space for plantings. So the road, it's it's kind of both. It's a little bit it's, of both. It's the planting and it's acting as a levy, so it reduces the, the flood storage capacity of of the site. So you're you're right. Then I, I, I just yeah. when I looked at it, I thought, wow, we're going to move that whole road. That's going to be a lot of money. Mm -hmm. If it's for flood capacity, it's not regular flow. It would seem to me some culverts would would do that, but that's just a thought. Yeah. A way to keep the cost down. I don't know how much I didn't. I I looked at that whole thing very quickly, but I didn't. Uh, I didn't get a get a sense of what percentage was the moving of the road and what percentage was the planning. So maybe that was in there, and I just didn't see it. You read this already, Peter? Yeah. What percentage of the budget? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. There is a budget written out there, and I'd have to. Go back and refer to it as to a what? good chunk of that. A good chunk of that's got to be moving that road. I think road. it was about it seventeen thousand. Okay, Boy, this yeah. is a pretty fancy little entrance way. Yeah. Yeah, there was about seventeen thousand there. The whole thing was sixty-seven. Yeah, it's, a, right. it's not. It's not an inexpensive project. So, my other question, and I don't know if this is the time to ask it. So, that is not the town. That's the state, right? So this is just information for us. It's a little bit of both. So <laughs> just checking because there was I, there this was has been an interesting there was some suspicious talk about us <laughs> taking over that. <laughs> I've had some very interesting conversations the last few weeks, um, scoping this out to see what it would take to get this to 100% design and or implementation. So. Um, my understanding, and I could be way off on this, is that there is town interest in this site. It's used, it's of value to the town. Correct. Um, it is owned by the state. It is under the management oversight of the dam safety division. And they contract out operation and maintenance to Wrightsville Recreation District. Correct. Um, so all of these players need to be involved in this conversation because any funding source that will fund this project wants to know who is actually taking over operation, operations and maintenance long term? Do they have the funding for that long term, and do they know what they're doing? Do they agree to do That's that? That's exactly our concern. Uh, 
Absolutely understand. We thought we were. We thought we were taking it over. We thought we had to take it. Right. Yeah. And we were ready to do it, and then all of a sudden, at the last minute, the rug gets pulled out from under us. No, we don't want. We don't. We don't want to have a rug. We don't want to. Yeah, it was a good thing. It was a good thing. Yeah. No, no, no. I understand, but I mean, the, the rug could come back. Is what I'm. Actually, <coughs> I, I, I just don't. I. I to my knowledge, that was never finally resolved as to who was going to be responsible for maintaining that long term. In the short term, the state committed to do it for what, two years? Wait, Peter, I got to do a point of information. Okay, all right. We actually got a call from, um, not the head of the dam, but somebody from ANR who had clarified that there, the state was under a permanent contract with the, who are the guys who dug the um, Brightsville? What were they called again? The Army Corps of Army yes. Corps Engineers to yeah. maintain that in perpetuity. Yes. Yeah, I thought we okay, did. So there was no, the, and, 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 I, and I spoke with Ben Green at the Dance Division. He was aware of that. Yeah. They know that. Okay. So that they would that love is, the town to take right, it over. But they yeah. actually, but they told us we had to. Yeah. Right. And, I, and so I, we found that contract. Right. And yep. I did convey to them. You know, okay. that I don't think that there's a lot of interest there. Just trying to make sure we're all on the same page. <laughs> so, what, one thing I did learn through a lot of these calls is that it'd be really important to get all these people in a room. Um, and so, what I did, and one of the things I shared with you, some of you might have printed out, maybe not, is I submitted an application did for just to get to 100% design. Um, to get to implementation this year did require a match. And so we'll chat a bit about what we were considering for match. Um, we were thinking about in-kind roads crew work from the town to move the road as the match. Um, but I heard from Paul that they're just too busy and they couldn't even put it in their plan for the summer. So we tabled that and said, well, let's at least get it to 100% design so it's lined up and ready to apply for implementation funding in the future. So this application that I, I applied for just, I think, last week, it's to blo a block grant that the districts are able to apply to. So I'm only competing against other districts. So I'm feeling pretty confident we'll get it, but I don't know. But I wrote into this stakeholder meetings. So if I get the funding, the first thing I'm going to do is bring the town into the room, bring the dams division into the room, bring Wrightsville into the room. Um, I have to contract out for the, the, the engineer. So bring the engineer into the room and say, okay, this is what we know so far at the 30%. What are some things that might have missed the last conversation? Because um, I did have some conversations with you and Bar not Barbara. Another, um, I, there were some other things of interest to the town in terms of what this design should or could include in terms of blocking off access to other parts of the park, um, but being aware of parking limitations. So I think that there's a lot of questions on that front, not just on the operations and maintenance front. So I've written that into the grant. And that will be something that if we do get it, I'll be reaching out to all partners and saying, can we get in this room? Can we converse on that? But a big pending question as this moves to implementation is what can we find for a match from the local level? even though the property is owned by the state. They want to see, funders like to see that there's local interest and draw, and what could that match be? So I've been brainstorming a little bit with Lee about this, and I think we've got, if we get this funding, we've got the year to sort of figure that out. Um, and so this was, I've been trying to track down Paul. I figure he's probably really busy with snow removal right now. <laughs> yeah. So I haven't really gotten any sense from him. But one thing yeah. I wanted to float, maybe at the stakeholder meeting, maybe hearing back from you through communications, is, is that is it feasible to write into the 2020 work plan for the roads crew some work on this road and count that as match? Other match options are bringing in volunteers for um, the plantings piece of it and counting that time. Other match that I'm counting into it is any of the time that the Conservation Commission people are participating, or really anyone of the town is participating in the stakeholder meetings. That's match and counting there. So, I just, I'm sorry, but I want to be clear about this. <coughs> so you're looking to us solely for match, or are you looking at all these partners to share in the match? It's kind of a weird thing because the so the state would be a funder, um, so asking for a match from them is kind of going to be a weird 
I, I'm not quite sure how it, it'll operate, and I don't. I'm I'm going to ask for more guidance from the basin planner on that piece of it. Okay, because um, one of our one of our concerns is that, that is used by lots of folks from right. Central Vermont, not just people from Middlesex. Right. Probably and used more by people outside of Middlesex than in Middlesex. Right. Mm -hmm. So it just seemed to what, and I'm I'm just trying to remember the conversations we have when we discussed this before. But one of our concerns was, hey, why should it be all us? We're definitely interested. I would never say that we wouldn't provide some kind of match. I think probably we would. But to ask us to do all a match, I would be pushing back to uh, some of the other surrounding communities and looking for them to participate. Right. And maybe the way to do it is is through Wrightsville. I mean, there's, I, I don't know. but. Certainly, I think we would be reluctant to be responsible for the entire match. I guess what I'm saying. And we've never voted on that. We've never made a decision on it. But just trying to remember the history, that was our concern. Yeah, and that's useful to hear. And I think that I've heard some of that as well coming into this conversation. Um, and I, I think that'll be useful to bring. I think that's why I really wanted to budget in these meetings because I mm -hmm. think that getting everyone at the table is really useful and being upfront about who, who, what people are expecting to because um, I do know that we're going to be asking of Wrightsville at least long-term operations and maintenance costs. Um, I know if we do plantings that'll be coming from our budget and our time for fine volunteers. Um, if we can get other commissions or other towns involved, that would be great. And so brainstorming with you folks about who you think would be really engaged or interested in that. And then the beyond the match, the rest of it's coming from the state, so that's kind of everyone funding it in some ways. Right. right. Well, maybe, uh, maybe when you're doing that, you should ask the people on the on the Winooski, I mean, on the Riceville project, who they would recommend. I mean, they must have some statistics <coughs> on what percentage of people we from had some, town. I believe we had some statistics. Oh, we did? Somebody gave us. I have a... Well, I remember we had, who's our, who's our person? Jane? Jane Dudley. Dudley. Yeah. She did tell us some stuff mm -hmm. when she came in yeah. before. But, I mean, there's, there's a convenient way to reach out to they do a per capita surrounding to all communities. Of us, right? Yeah, and they're in the throes of increasing their is per Mount, Montpelier is part of that, right? Yeah. Because there are a lot of people from Montpelier at that part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think it's worth asking those questions and I think it's worth knowing um, the feasibility of finding getting those matches. Because I think yep. if other towns are saying this is out in, in your town and it's most servicing you folks and no one else is interested, then this won't really be a viable project moving forward if it requires match from the implementation phase. So um, I think understanding what Middlesex is willing to put forward as match and what's feasible will be helpful. As a percentage, what would the match likely be? Do you know? The block grant right now requires a 20% match for non-MS4 communities. That's There's a rumor. Can you just tell me what an MS4 community is? Middlesex is a non-MS4. So MS4 is the towns that oh, have to do like their separate own. Separate storm sewer oh, okay, system. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> separate systems. Okay. Chittenden County. Right. Okay. It's largely Chittenden County I just County want to be towns. able to put it in the minutes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. There's a rumor that the new Black Grant requires no match for MS4 communities, but I can't guarantee that, and I don't know what implementation funding sources will look okay. like. Thank you. Lee, did you agree to that redoing the road like that? Yes. I think that's one of the biggest benefits of, of the project is to uh, restore the flood storage capacity. It looks pretty not metal sexy. <laughs> it looks over the top. Did you guys see the picture? 
Okay. It looks like a state park. It looks better than a state park. It looks like the entrance to a zoo or something. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Jurassic Park. <laughs> I mean, it just looks so the visualization <laughs> to be It looks so fancy. I mean, my God. It'll be a gravel road, much like the one that exists. But yeah. But look at it. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Well, it's the planning. It's, it's, the, a, it's, it's a picture. Planning. After those plantings go to seed for a few years, Mary, they won't look like that. I can guarantee it's not going to be maintained. Whoever's maintaining it isn't going to be maintained like the White House garden. Which is good. It'd be nice Whatever. for the people who live near it. They won't need to have their own garden. So are there other questions about this so project the, or concerns? So the it? timing, we're, we're thinking this is a year away at least. Yeah. So okay. this is if I get the funding, it'll be input, we'll do 100 percent, 30%, 100%, thank you, <laughs> too many shady real projects, 100% um, design this spring and summer um, and have an initial meeting and an afterwards meeting of, okay, what is the 100% design? Are we happy with what that included or not included? Um, are we happy with who's taking on operation and maintenance? Are we happy with some of these match ideas? Let's apply for implementation funding. So that's what we're going to do if it starts for 119. That's what we would do. Let's do this next step that with getting all the stakeholders at the table. My first thing on 4119 would be a request for quotes or proposals from the different consulting groups like Stone or Watershed Consulting Associates and other folks like that. Um, so that I've never gone through that with this organization yet, so I'm assuming that it'll probably take about a month, giving them time to put together their proposals, review them, choose one. Six weeks? Five or, five or six weeks. Okay. Because <laughs> you're, you're going to want to give folks a couple, three weeks to respond. To and put it together. To look at them and pick one and get in touch with them and get a contract and schedule a startup meeting. Probably six weeks. So mid May to early June is when the stakeholder meeting is. Do I keep this or do you have to have it? Yeah. Only copy. Yeah, no, I have. That's your copy, I think. Oh, no, that's my copy. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can keep it. Enjoy it. We have it electronically, I think. Right? We do. Yes. I mean, yeah. We're just didn't I'm not going to. I know, but I don't read things like okay. that. Okay. It's too long to read on an iPad or computer. Other questions, anyone? Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, great. Thanks for your time. Look forward to working Thank with you, you folks if we get it. Right. Thanks for coming. I, I don't think we got your name. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Amy McCrellis with Stone Environmental, and I thought that we were starting at 5.30, and I didn't look at the updated agenda, so I'm totally lame. But I was here in case there were any questions about the Shady Row Upper Watershed Project that we're just embarking on. Thanks very much. I do have, I do have one question for you. Sure. So I remember three years ago, we put that cover in. The big, and my, the big cross culvert or the, the, the smaller one? The one at the corner, which is okay. causing the problem. Okay. And I thought, and maybe I'm wrong, that Stone Environmental was involved in recommending us to put that culvert there to reduce the amount of water that was coming down the road and going to where the prospective water Park. garden was going to be. Hmm. That's interesting. Um, and I, yeah, no, I mean, I, it doesn't matter now. It's just it's just concerning to me that we thought we were doing a good thing when we put that culvert in, and now, now it looks like we did a bad thing. Well, well, maybe not. No, I don't think that you did do a bad thing. No. Um, the the same water is ultimately coming to the same place, which is off right. the edge of the bank down right. to Martinsburg. Right. Right. So you distributed the flow a little bit more before it gets to that big cross culvert and takes the turn and right. goes off the edge of the bank. Um, in terms of the leach field, that may not be the best idea ever. Um, but I think there's, I mean, that, that's why we're, we're back. And the big, the big picture, um, we spent a lot of time on the, the runoff coming through the elementary school because there was a, a time-sensitive opportunity there with the renovation that was going on at the school. And, I think we all suspected that we would be back because that was about 15% of the total drainage area that's coming to the head of that gully. Okay, thank you. Sure. 
and if I can take a moment to do introduction. Oh, sure. This Please. is Steve Martin. Oh, I didn't catch everyone's name. I'm so Mary sorry. Mary Skinner, select board. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. No, oh, Phil Hayek. Steve Martin, select board. Peter Hood. Liz Sharp. Right. And I wanted to just introduce Steve because I know you've been wanting to connect with him about Story Road. Yes. And so I wanted you to have face to name on there. So. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Great. guys. Thank you, Thank so, you much. so much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. 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 I don't know about that. I wouldn't think they'd be tax, but I don't know. Are you guys talking about the sheriffs? No, but you know the fire department has to pay sales tax. There's a big sales tax there. I mean, Marge signed off on it. I know, but I just wonder if... Why would they have to pay sales tax? I'll uh, send her an email. I thought you were talking about the sheriffs. No, I saw that, but why are you concerned about that? Because I got a call from the sheriff's department asking if they could uh, monitor a part of just briefly Route 12, even though it's a state highway, because they got so many complaints from people in Putnamville, and I said, "Yeah." And that's the bill. Must be. <laughs> well, maybe it's, I'm glad they're. Well, I'm got, I mean, I was just. Yeah. I was just curious about the bill. They're doing some enforcement activity. Well, with the they bill. got a lot. He said we're getting a lot of complaints about people speeding on Route 12. I know it's a state road, but so and I meant to talk to you about it, but I forgot. Mm. But well, can sorry, we, can we let Lee, oh. let's put that under other business, or can we have Lee? Yeah, yes. we can. Want to tell us? Um, sorry to take up your whole meeting here. Uh, we've had a discussion with uh, the uh, Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. Um, there was just a big tactical basin planning effort done and looking at the Winooski watershed and identify, um, part of that work was identifying um, outstanding water resources and brooks and waterways that have um, great attributes that should be reclassified under a new scheme uh, that the state has. And they've identified parts of Herrick and Martin Brook as um, having outstanding basically trout hatchery streams. Um, there's, a, there's a really healthy trout population in the upper reaches of those and they want to reclassify um, from just kind of a normal waterway to, to this, hey this has, this has good biota in it. Um, what that does would, there's really no action um, that the town would have to take, but it would allow the town to uh, put extra protections on the on those sections of the river if they wanted to. <coughs> but say if somebody purchased land and wanted to build a house, you could look at the setback from the stream, or you know the proximity of a driveway to the stream, and, and take that into consideration during a zoning uh, review. Um, Things like that. Right now, the, the reaches, you can look at this map if you want. Um, it's numbers 10, <coughs> numbers 10 and 11 right here. <coughs> it's, it's mainly the headwaters of those streams um, that more or less fall within the um, Hunger Mountain Headwaters project, so that land's already protected anyway. Um, as, as time goes on, the, the state might do additional monitoring and downstream or other water bodies in the town and suggest reclassifying them. But right now, those those are the stretches of rivers. <coughs> I'd like to reclassify. Yep. I'm all for the trout. Yeah. Yep. But I am not all for the state putting additional restrictions on our... The state doesn't put restrictions. There's no... It, it can allow for the town, if they wanted, if the town wants to okay. put something in the zoning laws to... So this doesn't mean that by reclassifying this, somehow the state is taking over responsibility for 
No, they monitor all all these streams yep. anyway for you know fish turbidity, phosphorus loading, you know different indicators of the stream's health, and they're going to continue to do that work regardless if this is reclassified. Um, they might say, hey, you know the the health of this stream's failing. What's going on? But there's there's no. But it's, no the headwaters, but it's the headwaters, it's not down below where people are swimming. And I, th I think it gets down close to Story Road. Where's Herrick? Herrick is parallels Martins Brook and it crosses, uh, I don't know if it's Shadyville or Molly Supple, but it's Where is it number? It's a, I can't tell on here. 11? Yeah, Herrick, Herrick parallels Martins Brook and actually comes into Martins Brook. Um, it's that box culvert under uh, Government Hill Road, uh, that intersection. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the box, yeah. Yeah. That the box culvert box right culvert. there yeah. in Shady Road that we okay. put in, what, four yeah. years ago four or whatever. Years ago. Oh. <coughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So, let uh, me just to clarify for the minutes. Yeah. This might give the opportunity for the, the zoning to affect those areas designated. Like, this is just to follow up on Peter's comment. Yeah. Not all of Martin of uh, Martin Creek yeah, or whatever. It could just areas. be built the particular part That's of Martin Creek. Right? Yeah, those of course, areas yeah. designated oh. as oh. it's called uh, B1 fishing. Mm -hmm. B1 fishing. Okay, thank you. Um, but like I said, they might do monitoring in the future and have other indicators. That, you know, there might be aquatic biota or you know the fish of. After we do all these great projects on, on Shady Rill, maybe uh, the the fish take up in the pools downstream, um, and they they might suggest reclassifying lar longer lengths of the stream. Um, and we can decide as a town whether or not to accept that. So what you need from us is the okay for this reclassification? Or is it just well, gonna happen we could with us or without us? With or without us. No, I think I need your approval. Oh, okay. I thought That's you said it didn't down. matter. And the Conservation Commission is recommending this to yes. us? Yes. Questions, I'll board members? I'll move approval. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Can I, can I just get a wording for that motion? Well, permit permit for the <laughs> reclassification of B1 fishing areas on Martins Creek and Herrick Brook? Sounds, that's exactly what I said. Martins <laughs> <laughs> Creek. Where's, what's, where's my house on this? Do you know where I live? I'm on Farm Road. Or, uh, this, is, my Brooks. this is my a Brooks. big map. Isn't it? It is. yeah. so, this is like yeah, all I got, a. I got Brooks at, you know. I really appreciate oh, this. Isn't Middle 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 now I know where to go. This is like the red zones. Don't yeah. Don't publish this in the newspaper. Bigger version. You know where I want to get the names. I'm not. One of the maps we had around here, I think, is called. Okay. I thought this was all middle sex. Right. We're just talking about yeah, the There's so, right there. right there. 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 so many brooks here. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's the the fishing I see a lot of stocks. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Down there. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. You want to keep that? I was hoping. This big one? Yeah. <sighs> sure. Thanks, George. <laughs> I only got a little Bye, George. One. I've never heard of that. I left your bottle of water, unfortunately. I know it's not yours. It's Amy's. Well, thank you. Thanks, Lee. Okay. Thanks, Lee. So I think you're all set. Thanks, yeah. Lee. Thank you for your time. But you were a lot of the agenda, Lee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm going to come in more frequently. Do little chunks. Well, thanks for all your work. Do you this. need those minutes sent to anybody as proof that you've uh, yeah. got the yeah. approval of the select yeah. board? Um, I can pull them offline. Okay. Or you can go. So I'm going to suggest that uh, since Fred Connor is here, that we... Well, so, are, so are Patty and Bill. Oh, and they're here for the signage? Yeah. All right. Well, let's follow our agenda then. Thank you. So improving signage at the corner of French Culver and Government Hill Roads actually possible. Um, 
I also included the note from Patty Down in your package. Um, so what, right, yeah. what's the proposal? Um, well, we have other things to discuss, but this may not be the meeting to do it at. Might take a little bit more time. Not sure. You're only warned for this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What's the proposal? I mean, that we're going to say action likely. Or are we going to? It's right hear in this email. Putting a sign. Probably. Yeah. Okay. This one from yeah. Penny. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So people using government help Yeah. Yeah. Did everyone get emails that copy that email? Yeah. 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 You didn't? Oh, okay. No. I'll go get that for you. Sorry. Would you? That's for Penny to us. From Penny Down, David from Oh, Ray Penny. Tan. She was going to be here. There you go. Oh, thanks. I got a we, we got one, sir. I'll take one back if you made another one. I gave mine away. Well, wait a minute. Just have that one. All right. Thank you. That's pretty much what I said. Mm -hmm. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. Someone came here, but it wasn't you guys. Someone came here a few meetings ago talking yeah. about this. But we did talk it? about it. Yeah, who was yeah. it, though? Someone came a guest, I thought. I think it was Penny. I don't know. It no. Penny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Yeah. There, there was I was asked, so that's why I was really too. surprised because she said, you know, the I told her Sarah and she did a select board and they didn't do anything about it. I'm like, I'm pretty sure we talked about it. And I thought I someone thought actually came, like an out of. Or maybe not. Maybe it just. <coughs> maybe, was on yeah, yeah. maybe you just talked we about talked it. We talked about this with various people in the last two or three years. The sign has been missing for two or three years. You mean the one that the, the French, French road? road? Yeah. And, uh, you know, we've complained about the intersection itself, where they're coming down Culver Hill, or coming up Culver Hill, turning left on the French Road. They don't know where they're going. They're, they don't even know there's an intersection there right. until they're on top of it. Right. Because you got a 30, 35 mile an hour speed limit, and coming down that hill, mm -hmm. you're almost at the intersection. You guys are right there. You're seeing it every yeah. day. Yeah. Right. And they hit the trees when they come around the corner too much. They hit a uh, telephone pole. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, I've taken several people home because they couldn't get the car out. And people are always asking, where's French Road? Mm -hmm. But there's no, no indication of any intersection or anything from any of the directions. Yeah, but the dangerous one, the, the blind one, is when you're coming Cold. from Culver Hill. Culver to well, take a left. It's blind because it's left. Uh -huh. yeah. And the because of the speed. Right, right. And that used to be a T intersection, but we won't It was get a into total that. T. I grew up there. My parents built that house on under, the corner. Yeah, been there forever. Mm -hmm. And there's a big rock. If you're coming up French Road toward the intersection, there was a big rock right there on government, and that was our focal point. That was the middle of the road. Everything oh. else was came down and intersected. Huh. And of course, for those of us who live in the area, it's not a big deal. We know when to slow down. Mm -hmm. I said to my brother, Mike Patterson, I said, Mike, you couldn't take this corner at 35. This is last summer. He tried it. He said, oh, dear God. Oh, it's so frightening. Oh, my God. I got like two miles an hour in the winter. He said, if I didn't know that corner, there's oh, no God. way. No way I could take it at 35. So you're proposing like a sign as you come from Culver Hill Road somewhere between like Sue Price's and your house mm -hmm. saying, I don't know what, intersection ahead or some sort of like curve right. ahead. Well, the intersection notification that we have right. many intersections throughout the state. And then also though, probably a sign that says- Reduce speed. <laughs> or that says um, French Road mm -hmm. yeah. and one that says Government Hill Road. Yeah. Well, there's there one to Government Hill, there's, there's a sign there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where is that sign? It's on, on the left as you come up Government Hill, right at the intersection. <coughs> on the left, oh, if you come... I don't think I've ever driven up. I've so if you're coming down, down Culver Hill Road, right it's going to be on the right down going down. Right, yeah. okay. Just before you start going down. So you'd want to have like a sign um, probably across from you so people can see it that says French. There used to be one. And yeah. then it just there was one disappeared. There. Oh, okay. And you said that was three years ago? Yeah. 
two or three. There's one on the other side of French, isn't yeah. there, from Molly Sue? Yeah. So really, yeah. really, we're looking at two signs. One is the danger. Well, you really should have curve. one coming down French Road too to turn right. Oh yeah, we've seen cars miss. So there's been one that went straight. We're gonna go around. Well, that's yeah, so then you'd second. also need a Culver Hill Road sign because that's when you're well, coming from one. French. There is one on Culver Hill, but you really can't see it until you're on it. It's, oh, really? Um, I don't, yeah, I don't remember. I don't know if you know my house. You know our house where the fence is by yeah. the Culver Hill Road? Yeah. It's like right there by our big maple tree. Um, you can't really see Culver Hill that way. I don't, I don't know. remember seeing that sign, frankly. See, there but, you go. Huh. But anyway, it's a dangerous yeah, it's corner. <laughs> It is. I had talked with Paul about this actually twice, um, and we need to we need to get some signs up there. But uh, in our sign package that we're doing, I'm not sure where this falls into our, our new signs that we're going to go up. But this could be included in this year's signs because we had it split into five years. Right. for replacing all the signs anyway. So how many would you propose based on, uh, would you just, would you do like uh, something like the curves, like those you could, arrows? You, and do, you do the curve that shows, but there's actually three roads at that intersection. That's right. So the roads change. If it was treated as a curve, then you would... Then you were, then you you were, you were extending Culver on, on Culver Hill, yeah, if you're coming curvy. down from yeah. Pease. Which, which brings me to another point. It's almost like Culver and French are now one. Because of the way it's made. And that has changed over the years. Um, and which, which we've discussed also. Taking our, continue to take our land as they make that corner wider. Oh, almost right. every year. I remember you guys came in and talked about yeah. that a Mike while Mike ago. Did. Almost Mike every Mike. year. It yeah. gets, it's it's a little like shorter. A, yeah, they, <laughs> they so squeeze it over be, a little. Should there be a stop sign at the top? I mean, if the reality is that that's the through road, then there should either be a yield sign or a stop sign at the top of Government Hill when you're coming up, right? Isn't that a tough You space can to treat yield? that a little differently. I mean, you you can you could put a sign there, um, a stop sign, and and stating that traffic coming up Government Hill doesn't stop. It, it, there's several ways of approaching that. No, I get it. So that because I I would think that coming up Government Hill, you that's one you don't want to stop at. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing because you don't yeah, want to be slipping back down. But it's Flat it flattens out point. when you it get up. It does yeah. flatten out, but it's it's not the steep part. Not right until the right right there at the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. what would it take to change or to combine Culver and French? One road. What, who does that? How would that even happen? If it's oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm just saying, would that in fact? Oh my god. I'm just saying that. I'm just saying that it right now it is one. You ask anyone who drives it. Maybe. I, or the reason we're all the reason we're all grimacing is when we've gotten into these issues of changing road names. You know, people who've lived on the roads forever, they want it to stay the same. You know, it's just a it's a horn. That's system. why we There's have no so many good. bare swamps. There's yeah. no good. Yeah. <laughs> There's no good answer. I think the GPS also tells you, like you're, it does tell you when you're going down yes. Culver. It says, you know, change compared it. to turn left onto French. If you use one. Oh, yeah. so everything, okay. If so you use one, yeah. if you're, if you're out of town and you're using one. If it's yeah. becoming a one road, maybe there should be a maybe stop, a stop on the main road, whichever you call it, Culver. Which one? Or, yeah. Yeah. If there were going to be a stop, the stop would have to be on, I think, at this point, because people aren't going to follow it. I mean, look at the intersection down in Montpelier. People still don't stop there, and it's a four-way stop, and people yeah. just plow right through. I think Even you have to have it on government. Lights, well, you have to have it on government. Which one are you railroad. talking about? The one by Carriage House Salon on Spring, 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 on Spring oh, Street. Yeah. Oh, people yeah. just blow through it, and so yeah, I mean I don't see people stopping. The people. Especially well, coming up the hill. People don't people don't stop at the at the Center Road Brook Road intersection either. They blow right through that stop sign. I can tell you. Well, I don't know. I always stop there because there's always so many. Most coming people up. don't. <laughs> I, I would tell, tell you most people there's don't. My, I drive and you don't know if they're time. going on the Center Road or the Brook Road, but they come at a lot of well, speed. Well, I think. So. I, I mean, uh, I think we agree that 
exactly what we're agreeing to, I don't know. But I, I think we need to look into it, signage. figure it out. Yes, yeah. yeah. agree on more signage, yeah. definitely. It's a safety issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, exactly what that signage would be, I guess we've got to think about a little bit and get back to you. Yeah. Um, and the speed limit would be in, included in this? The speed limit 35, it's, you can't take that corner at 35. Um, that's the, no, the only way you can do that is for a stop sign. Right. Three stop signs. But period. can't you can't you do one of those curb sign those yellow curb signs that say twenty five? Yeah, but that's just a warning sign. No, that's I know, but that I mean, you have to be slower than thirty five. Do a reduced speed. Yeah, but I think we have a problem that if we deviate from the general, we have to do a study mm -hmm. before we yeah. can change it. That's my before recollection. You, before you can change that speed limit, right? Yeah, change it. I mean, yeah, if we could change limit. the speed limit, believe me, it would be 25 by the farm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we leave those potholes there. Yeah. Uh, who does? Who's in charge? Who does the study? The the state. Do it with the state. That's okay. the state. And but it, it, what yeah. if? Come up with. <laughs> Something for it, see if we can come up with something for a solution. Yeah, let's get some let's get some signs up and make it safer as a first uh, as a first step. It's the same thing going down by my house on that curb. Every winter, people smash into our mailbox on Culver Hill Road on the, at the White Farmhouse. As you go down oh, yes. the curb, mm -hmm. people smash into the mailboxes every year, about mm -hmm. twice a year. Yeah, we, had, going too we fast. had one eliminated a year ago. Yeah, yeah our, yeah, our mailbox. They don't see the curb coming, and they just. Well, maybe you should put some curve signs down there, too, Steve, while you're at it. I think I've asked. I mean, we could, they said no. Maybe we could put some speed bumps on my road to slow them down below 60. L L Lowry wanted to put a, a granite post up. I'm like, I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're going to kill anyone. Well, well, I'm telling you, coming around our corner, we thought we'd put boulders up all yeah. the way around. Okay. You're not the first person who thought no. about that. But well, what happened right. to the one over by Romney School? Were they forced well, they to they thought it was a little antisocial yeah. is what I think. Oh. <laughs> Do you guys want well, to uh, put this on the agenda for a future meeting? Or you yes. Yeah. Let me get with Paul and and go through this thing a little bit and come up with a recommendation. And Perfect. We'll get it back on. And I'll contact them. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for listening to I'd, all the stuff about I'd the like watershed. I'd like to sign so that we're no time in the future <laughs> to uh, discuss the encroachment yeah. at the intersection over the last several years. Oh, you so, your property? Yeah. Yeah. Is the encroachment outside of our right of way? Mm -hmm. Mike keeps saying, just, just move it, just, just yeah, move that's it. What I mean. Okay. Yeah, okay. I know based we on, discussed based it. Based on my measurements from the center of the road. Okay. And okay. I look for. Well, we can look at that. We used to have a property. Is it grading or something that keeps getting Yes, I'm making a note right now. We used to have a property marker in the road, and that's been eliminated. Okay. And we can definitely look at that because we yeah. don't like to do that. Yeah. It's bad. And we practice. discussed it once before, and I thought we had solved it. Didn't you guys put up a fence at one point? No. no. Okay. They put uh, some reflectors up. Yeah. And every year they get taken out, and they don't replace them. Who's they? When they do. When they, 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 the when they do, they. It well, I always in. like to joke. I mean, it's they did this. They it comes out. The land. But, yeah. but that's. Yeah. Something for another time. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're, I would say we're on it. Yeah. I mean, you don't need to come back. We yeah. get it. Well, one more thing then. What? Okay. One more thing then. Okay. Because okay. of the way the road is banked now over the last several years, when the water, when it rains really hard, or at all, the water streams down in that turn here, and yeah. it takes out our driveway. I can see that. Every time because of the way the road is banked now. So. And that's because of the way we are grading the road. Yes. You know. Might as well There's look at that while we're on your driveway. No. Okay. No. Steve's yeah. on it. Steve's on it. We're out of here. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for waiting. Hi. No problem. Enjoy your skiing, Bill. So, yeah. so just, just quickly, I would <laughs> like to remind all of us that we agreed to look at the Molly Supel Center Road. East Hill Road, whatever it is, signage that Cynthia Martin brought to our attention, and I'm not aware we've ever uh, oh, done point. anything about that, she and the had, signs she, have not changed. She had several recommendations, but it's all in yeah. the letter, isn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. so yeah. and we said we would. Right. Yeah, so, so maybe it's the same time. We yeah. Yeah. Just revisit that, too. Yeah. We, yeah. I just, Fairly I hate it when we. Meeting of the signs. Meeting of the signs. When we don't yeah. follow through. I, I, so, I mean, too, you know, all of us who live here don't have any problems, but. We're not the only people. Well, using you know, the, so here's the here's the classic thing. If you really want to be scared, 
I come, do. To, come to my house and GPS your way to the village. And guess what it tells you? McCullough uh, Hill that's Road. What, yeah, Waze tells you that. Well, too. I can't believe that Pat, uh, that she's saying, Penny is saying that they take her all the way from Montpelier past Culver Hill Road, going up Government Hill Road. That's not even faster. No. That's out of the way. Why you would the GPS so. tell you to do that? It probably looks more direct. Huh? What I want to know is where the hell GPS. is Penny Gowan getting people from other countries to stay at her Airbnb? There <laughs> are a lot of people out there who do Airbnbs and people come from all of them. From all yeah. different countries? Yeah. yeah. And says. they want to live in the and they want to stay in the country? I'm just shocked. Yeah, they want I think they need to start taxing the Airbnb. Some of them, stay for, weekend, some of them stay for a weekend, some of them stay for a week. It is. It should be. Really? Yeah. Different, oh, yeah. Different times. There are a lot of people have Airbnb. Okay, so, well, Mr. Connor, you are on. Good evening. Welcome. Hi, Fred. Hi, Steve. Hi, Fred. You all know, you know I don't all know of us, Fred. right? Because no, you heard us. I don't know, Fred. What, you I interviewed so us, you? <laughs> and I've turned 50, so I've forgotten. <laughs> uh -oh. oh, that's the excuse they all use. I know some of you, and to those I don't, I'm glad, glad to meet you. Okay. Liz Sharp. Yes. She's Hi. our youngest member, too. <laughs> yeah, we're aging. We're aging. Gaining on the rest of us. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Gaining, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're catching up. So, Fred. Yes. You're up. Okay. Uh, I appreciate your time. Uh, I brought a very brief history of uh, the assemblage that my brothers and I have done over at the uh, northwest corner of uh, Exit 9. Uh, and it's three parcels. Uh, it's the uh, f former Ryan Estate, which came from Merriam, which came from Ward Now. And that was the house that we moved. Yep. Uh, and then there was the Donald Pierce site, which he thought he might build an electrical contracting shop at many years ago, uh, and that was a, uh, a parcel that was open land. Uh, came Next awards, closer to the house? Uh, bordering the uh, state complex. Right, yeah. yeah. And that came from, uh, more recently, uh, Papineau and McKinstry. Uh, and then the Sky Barsh's house, uh, which is the house that we currently rent, um, the house in, which is a house and barn, that came from Hannon, Papineau, McKinstry, um, so that's the more recent history from our title reports. Uh, the Knapp Farm, as I understand it, was actually built by Cyrus Mead. I think that might be the name of one of the breads down at the Red Hen Bakery. Uh, I think you're right. Cyrus Pringle. Yeah. yeah. Cyrus Pringle. Different, sorry, different, Cy yeah, different name. Cyrus same, same first name. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> Which is fairly unusual. Yeah, he was some, anyway. somebody that grew grain. Anyway. Uh, but it was... The, the, the farm, which is consistent, which um, is referred to as the Knapp Farm, was built by Cyrus Mead, and later uh, an ancestor of his, George Mead, traded it for a property in, in Moortown. Um, so I, I just, we're asking what, what the board's thoughts are about a change in the name, and I don't really know a lot about Ward Knapp, other than that he was born in 1892, and I, I haven't been able to, through some search, and find out exactly who. Have you looked at Nap? Ward Nap remembers. Ward Nap remembers. Ward Nap remembers. Sunny Nap lives down the street there. I mean, Fred if you just come down to see Nap remember our town clerk, you'll find out. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
on. Uh, but isn't that, that the old route too? It, it is yeah, the old it is. route too. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a, it's a pretty unique situation. It's I assume it was named Knapp Road when I-89 came in, which caused Route 2 to be moved. And then this Knapp Road is part of the Route 2 right. uh, roadbed. But it just sort of ends at that... It ends at that house. That house. It's, it's, it's right. an yeah. old driveway. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It just ends it's there, and it, u it used to skirt the house at the same grade as the house, okay. but Route 2, to be better horizontal geometry was raised up and mm -hmm. yeah. refresh your memory about in your this. history, Fred. What we did with Where's the throwing out, we didn't throw that out. Yeah, sorry. No, we didn't do anything. <laughs> no, we did not. We downgraded it? No. We downgraded it from Yes, we did. We but downgraded just the other day, the road. that was yeah. one of the yes. roads. Yes. Okay. So we don't plow it. We just no, right. No. We're so over so that Fred, is yeah. this okay. a trail you to your putting up some giant sign that's going to say um, Connor Pass? On the new uh, Connor Pass, ready for building, uh, you know, like you do on Route Two. <laughs> no, we would, we, we would be looking at doing a, a, a street sign name, a street sign name change. But who's going to look at that? I mean, when you're driving back and forth. Again, it's not not a cr cr critical request, and I'm going to have to come back and see Sarah and read this book about war. So. <laughs> uh, it's I don't know. Part of me feels like there's some history and like to to <laughs> change, like knowing what the history is about from that specific area is there's a reason not to change it um but the history is recent nap nap road yeah like how oh it's 60, 1960 probably yeah. oh, right the when the interstate went in mm -hmm. so yeah. before right. that it wasn't but it was nap the first road. name i mean that was the first name the road ever had right no oh, uh, yes no, i know besides yeah. being route two once yes. it right. became a road yes that's I, the first I believe name so. had. Yeah. yeah i mean i, I I don't know. I just so at the time he would have been around seventy. He was born in 1892. It's so. like the reason that it was named that way. It was to commemorate someone, and now we're yeah. it was now seven, we're taking yeah. away. It was well, so was well his, known in our his, community. Historically, yeah. we have cooperated with people who want to change the name of roads when they, especially when they own all the land, or if everybody yeah. who owns the land agrees. Yeah. Uh, well, is it now his private road? Yes. Oh, well then no. it's well, a private it's, road. It's, it's a class four. four. Class four. We asked for it to be a class four rather than be okay. abandoned because we have zoning concerns. Okay, yeah, yeah. Right. Subdividability. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, so it's, it's a class it's, four it's road that they own all of. It's in a commercial district, right? Industrial. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when we name your road Hood Road and then 100 years from now we decide we'd rather change it to something else, are you okay with that? Yeah, here you're gone. Me still road, hood road. Uh, just, it might it be. We might commemorate you in some way, and then so. decide yeah. we don't want to commemorate Dad's you anymore. Way. Yeah. Probably rather. <laughs> right? yeah. So, I Fred, let us. Let, we'll, we'll, this will be reflected in our minutes. Yep. Let us think about this a little bit. You read the book. Let's okay. let's put our heads I'm gonna together. I'm gonna temp I'm gonna say for this meeting, I'm gonna withdraw the request. And okay. I'll, I'll 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 read the history, and it, I assume it will trump my. Uh, my own little history, so um, I'll enjoy re learning about Ward. It's well, it's not just, it's actually about Middlesex. He's the one who remembers Middlesex. Yeah. But what we can do is we can come in here, I'll give you a little piece about uh, from the history book because we're also really low on those. Um, okay. And that'll, I'll, I'll, I'll photocopy some pages on Ward Nap and send it to you. How's that? That sounds great. Okay, that's okay. what we'll do. Great. This is we want to make you all, Fred. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm just no, making no, a no. statement right. no. that, like, yeah. you know. Yeah. No, that's I a don't concern. Have a problem. Connor Nap. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Fred, thanks. I mean, it just there's a there's maybe the younger people in town, of which there are not enough, um, don't remember him. But yeah. some of us. There is a Nap person that lives down here still. I don't know. She, she must, must be sunny to him. Yeah, she must be in some way. She's married to a guy that's a Nap. Oh. Wait, where's Charles is Sunny in? She's like in one of these little village houses down the way, across from the old store. Hmm. And as a side issue, I have been staying in touch with Sarah on the uh, temp site facility, which I understand is uh, still temp. Um, <laughs> looking, looking, well, <laughs> what I don't it was like looking more and more permanent until just recently when... They called it, it a slum. <laughs> yeah, they called it a slum, which... <laughs> It's not a slum. It's a pretty nice facility, actually. They said it was actually, just mobile homes, a mobile, mobile facility or something like that. The state, suffice it to say, and I, I did meet with a commissioner, what, a year ago? Uh, Probably more than well, a year. Longer yeah, than more that. than a year ago. Time, the time goes by 
time goes by fast. It was supposed to be a temporary facility. Yep. We extended it, then that extension expired. And we said no. basically what he told me is, what are you going to do about it? Right. <laughs> we said no. <laughs> the bottom line is, yeah. we're not going to do it. We're wait, not going to do anything That wasn't about Hal Cohen, was it? No. no, this no. Is okay, so this is Al Yes. Yep. Yes. But, um, you know, at some point, the state's going to come up with some kind of a solution about where they're going to... That, I couldn't facility. tell from that article whether they were still going to use that site or they were going to look all around the area. I mean, there they, was that for time, some reason, Times article. They say, Times which, article. which I pointed out to our esteemed town clerk the other day, they say there's insufficient water there. Well, we know, we know that is not the case because we, we had planned to have our main town village water line come come right through there. Well, there's plenty if that's of water. what they think, well, I think you should let them think that. Well, there's the question. Do we do we do we want it or don't we want it? They certainly are not thinking about putting it there. I don't think we they want it. They punched a new well for that facility, so that that well must be okay. But I heard they do have arsenic at the comp complex and they're trucking in water. Really? I wonder if there's arsenic in our water. There's arsenic in all water. Do you mean the right. right. <laughs> No, I'm just thinking that maybe that's you know if I had a different building bread, you know. One of right those. along, with, right along with the radon, and we got arsenic and in the, the water. Yes. Yeah, like it. Yeah. And an elevator that doesn't work, and sure. a back door that can't open, <laughs> and front stairs that you can't so use. To do. I'll order it. Thank I will you. order the test. See, Liz gets stuff. We we, we did have ours tested, Jesus. and it's fine. So. <laughs> okay. okay. Good. Send myself Keep us in the loop with your. We'll Let's go forward. Thank you much. Appreciate Thank your you time. Fred. Thank you, Fred. I'll send you that stuff. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'll make a timer. All right. Treasurer's report. Action possible. Guess who's on? <laughs> don't have one. <laughs> hey. Um, I don't think there's anything really. This is as of uh, yesterday at or Monday at Tuesday at 425, so. Anyways, whose um, property was sold for tax? One, two, three, four. You only got 33 cents? Hmm? What's this escrow tax sale, 33 cents? Oh, when there was a, we had a tax sale last year, it was uh, overpaid by 33 cents. Oh. And that's considered an asset? Yes, because well, we have money. Cents. Money coming in. Money coming in. Hmm? So there's nothing in this financial report which nothing jumps really, out at you that, or nothing you. really except for my budget. Well, I think a lot of <laughs> yeah. You can't nothing you can't do about that one. You can't help that. Um, I think it's people. Yeah, I think yeah, it's I'm all fine. I think we're pretty much covered. I think we're pretty much You told me it's six twenty five when that one was safe, right? Oh. If you, if you guys want to just do the minutes, then Phil can sign them and go. Not that I'm trying to rush you or anything else. Yeah, yeah right. Move approval. <laughs> Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? I abstain. I wasn't here. Okay. And um, do you have any correspondence? Have any consequence? Any correspondence with any consequence? Well, <laughs> Phil would like to hear about. Um, there's the Vermont League of Cities and Towns Spring Select Award from the Institute. I'm sure you guys That's got that. For the year. We have the Don't Penny Dow. That's your one yearly place. salary. There's the Penny Dow one email. Yeah. Wow, what's meeting? this for? Last meeting of the year. your money. Your pay. Last meeting you get, of the year. This is for the year you I just I feel like we just yeah. got paid. That's right. That's and because she didn't pay you in time last year, I guess. Yeah, yeah she paid us Thank you, Redeem. Check for me. I'm Look at that, there, Sarah. <laughs> new batteries for your headlights. I want headlight. to use my new deposit uh, techniques on my phone. Uh, but I swear to God, I feel like I just Where? got this. I know. So wait yeah. a second. There's no. So how I'm about the? Like down, how about the lithium battery? What lithium battery? Did you send us anything for tax records? Oh, you get it. Fifty-five. <laughs> You didn't ask me. She gets a regular paycheck. I'm so happy. Last year. I don't have that. Thank you would have to ask that. I, think I think the lithium batteries are for the fire department. No, when you say that, the thing about how much more I'm last year. Medical equipment. I can't believe how expensive it's going to be. Can we finish the meeting? Yes, we can. 1099, say all. Any 1099 that's produced is already gone out. 
I don't know if I got one. Well, I got it's one. 10 dollars I got one. Miscellaneous? Yep. How, long? How long ago did you oh, get it? Oh, we get a W-2. I mean, yeah, we get a W-2. So I think we, we get a W-2. Yeah, she, she sends them out as W-2s. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I didn't have one. One real quick question. I'm not paying self-employment tax. When do they come so I can check my mail? It was pretty They pretty came old. in January. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, yeah, they came so they're probably in piles I haven't looked through yet. So you're just going to lock the door? The door? Yeah. You don't have a key? I do have a key. Do you want me to lock the door? Yeah, don't lock yourself out. Problems. I won't. I have my keys are in my Did you give me a key? I don't know. Hey, the meeting's still happening. <laughs> yes, the meeting, the meeting yes. is still happening. Correspondence. No. She said no already. She started to say something and then she stopped. Okay, then. I would say we are... Wait, wait. We had what? questions from a bunch of people about the lithium batteries. Isn't that the same it's thing? It's just sales tax. It's it was the just a sales tax. The question is, should they be charged tax. sales tax? Well, who was it for? The fire department? Fire department's yeah. bill. I would say no, personally. I, I don't know, because Marge signed off on it. But but she might not She probably know. wasn't paying attention. She just looked at the batteries. Is there anything? Wasn't That's there something somebody raised and we said we don't have could we take it up at the end of the meeting? We were talking about uh, speeding on share on the sh reimbursing the sheriffs for speed for clocking speeding okay, on so, Route 12. So when did you? Uh, uh, they asked if they should do it, and you said yes. They said they're getting a lot of complaints, and they said, "Is it okay if we monitor Route 12?" And I said, "I would think if if people from Putnamville, which is part of Middlesex, are, are worried about speeding on Route 12, then by all means, I would do it." And they said, "All right, we won't won't do very much, just enough to like get people to get the word out for people." I'll to tell you, I've driven home on that road at night, and people, I'm not. I'm not a slow driver, and people are passing me like crazy. I know, and it's but, awful. But the problem, their issue was that it was a state road, so. All they say is Middlesex. Yeah, but I know in Middlesex, so, so they. So I figured that would be okay. Middlesex. And I was going to, I was going to, it was yeah. be between the last board meeting and this board meeting, so. The bottom been, line is any, any. Speed enforcement, they do. Well, that's what I figured. Speed. I figured that's what I said. Bill, that's, yeah. that's, their, <laughs> that's our people. But those, are our people. those are our people. Isn't it? Um, it's Worcester's fault. They're the ones who are speeding. <laughs> but if they write a ticket on a state highway, that's they don't, they don't get the it. money. They're in, yeah, don't they're in there just hit the nail we're, on the head. We're paying the expense for right. the state to get the money. Yes, right. I mean, but how much are we talking? I know, but less than $500. The fact is, well, whatever those bills I'm are. I'm going to use my first bank check deposit thing on my phone. I've never used it. I'm going to do it right now. I gotta watch Mobile how you do deposit. It. Do you have we to can. sign your check? Yeah. Yeah. Does it mean you have to put your yes. number?